ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to this bonus edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I'm 12 Kyle. Check this out on this podcast. What I'm going to talk about is toxic thoughts. Now, at the time of this recording, we have entered a new calendar year. Um, and of course, <laughs> the new year would not be complete without, you know, seeing memes of new year, new me. OK. However, a lot of times what happens is, is that the year changes and people make these resolutions to change themselves and just do things differently. And, and I get that. That makes sense. Um, particularly if you did some things that didn't go particularly well the previous year. However, sometimes we allow, you know, toxic thoughts to creep in. And the next thing you know, you're in the same boat that you were in the previous year. So the change that you said that you were going to make never happens, right? So I was reading this article earlier today and it talked about toxic thoughts. And I was like, you know, I might as well share this with the people. It's good information. Um, And it just talks about, you know, some of the things that you should do with toxic thoughts. Um, So I'll give you a couple of pointers. And again, I'm not a therapist. (laughs) I'm just a podcaster, man. Um, One of the things they talked about was to try to stop comparing yourself to others. <sighs> this applies to a lot of people. And the reason being is because a lot of negative thoughts come in the form of insecurity, jealousy, or resentment. And you know, that happens when you're comparing yourself to somebody else. And this is very easy to do particularly now with the advent of social media, you know, because, and I say this all the time, social media highlights the highlights, (laughs) you know, social media never highlights the lowlights. And, you know, we can all be going through something or have something bad happen. And you don't, you know, you're not necessarily running to Instagram to post that you got fired today, you know, but Hey, you get that new car. Take a pick for the ground. You know what I mean? So it we do that. And, and and I get it, right? But you have to move past that. And that's what the article talked about. Um, honestly, everybody has their own struggles. And so it's very different and dangerous, actually, to compare your life to somebody else's. Because, again, you don't know what that person is going through. And yeah, you might see this woman in a, I don't know, a Bentley, but you don't know what she did to get that Bentley. You might see this dude in this huge million dollar house and you don't know what he gave up to get that million dollar house. So I think particularly with social media, you have to be mindful of that kind of stuff because again, it reflects the highlights not the struggles um but that's their life and you can't do and compare yourself to anybody else because your path is your path what's for you is for you and you know you can be happy you should be happy for your family and friends particularly when there's a level of success but you also should be empathetic you know when they struggle or when you and vice versa they would be the same when you struggle um The reality is we don't know what people are going through. (laughs) So uh, get out of that toxic thought. Um, Everybody, again, has their own struggles. The reality is you probably won't see them on Instagram. Just keeping it a bean. (laughs) Uh, Another thing it talks about on the article was to separate your past and your present. Um. And I think that's very interesting because a lot of negativity can stem from your past, uh, especially when it comes to relationships, romantic relationships. Uh, I think 
if you're a certain age and you've been around for a while, you've probably had at least one. <laughs> one in a it's like a bad space hand. One in a possible uh you know, bad relationship, rela- romantic relationship. So, you know, sometimes we we keep a little bit of our past with us uh to kind of protect ourselves from being hurt again. Um you know, but if you do what you did in the old relationship, you know, there's no guarantee that you won't be hurt again. And when you bring that stuff along with you, you're actually sabotaging the relationship that you're trying to cultivate or or just even being able to move forward. So, you know, you have to deal with the reality and you have to deal in the present. Um, Just because things happened in the past that were bad doesn't mean that things are going to be bad again uh if you experience hurt in the past doesn't mean that you're going to have hurt going forward uh i can attest to that um but you just have to kind of approach each relationship um particularly romantic relationships you have to approach them with a a fresh start and everybody should get a clean slate um i know a lot of (laughs) times i know a lot of times uh you know people Women in particular are criticized for uh, their choices in men or something like that. But and men are, too. But women more so than men are looked down upon, a, you know, as far as the type of men that they gravi- gravitate towards. Um, and some of that is because maybe sometimes you don't let go of what used to be. And maybe you're kind of, you know, holding on or you're bringing something from the past into the present. And that's making you make the selections that you're making. Just something to think about. Uh, what else did they talk? Oh, they also talked about not letting people get to you. This is major because I found in, in my lifetime, and I and I hadn't been around that long, but <laughs> you know, a lot of people will say, "Well, I don't care," or even more explicitly, "I don't give a fuck." Right. So they'll say that or they don't care about this person or they don't give a fuck about this person. But the reality is they do. And, you know, I've always found that if you come in contact with a lot of people that say that they don't care about nothing and they don't care, you know, they care about something, you know, uh, but you can't let people get to you. That's the bottom line. Um that's not healthy and obviously it's it's very toxic um and it's very toxic for a number of reasons one in particular is that the article talks about the fact that you could get in the habit of crumbling other people under other people's judgments now just imagine if somebody said okay well hey i don't think that you're you know this or that and then all of a sudden you let those words define who you are um, I remember my mom told me a long time ago, I might have been like 10 or 11. She said, you don't ever let anybody tell you who you are. And that stuck with me. And I mean, it still sticks with me to this day. You can't put a label on me or, or, or anything because I know who I am. Um, but ultimately you can't let people get to you. And sometimes that has to also deal with the people who are closest to you. And I know that's easier said than done, but a lot of times, man, you got to be careful because people take their problems out on other people. So if it happens to you, you can't take that stuff serious and you can't take people serious like that. What the article does recommend that you do is make sure that you surround yourself with more positive people. I think there's something to that. Um, Another thing they highlighted in the article was to ask yourself, what good is this doing me? (laughs) Oh, man, that is so key. Um, I have asked myself that a lot. And I remember distinctly asking myself that, uh, Cause I used to be, I'll I'll just give you a quick example. Like I used to be heavy on Twitter and this was before like, you know, all of y'all showed up and messed up Twitter. (laughs) 
<laughs> but there was a time where Twitter was actually dope. Uh, and I'm on Twitter now, but I, I, I'm i honest. I'll be honest. I, I talk to the same people. I'm not nearly on Twitter as much as I used to be. Uh, and Facebook, for that matter, too. Facebook, I'm, I really don't even post much on Facebook. You know, I, re- I like people's pictures and I keep it moving. And I'm finding that I'm doing less and less of that. But just to give you an idea, like social media, I used to be heavy on Twitter. And then everybody showed up and Twitter got kind of janky. And it was like, and I asked myself that one day, I was like, well, what good is this doing me? Like, why am I here? Like, just negative post after negative post after somebody getting shot after this person arguing with that person. I mean, like, why? Why am I watching these fools argue? Why am I seeing people post fight videos? <laughs> why am I listening to this fool, you know, the leader of the free world act like a damn five-year-old? You know, so, nah, you have to ask yourself, and, and that could be for anything. For me, it just happened to be social media. But, you know, a lot of times that stuff can be uh, mood altering and triggering. You know, so I don't, you know, I don't watch cop killing videos and all kind of stuff like because that stuff is triggering. Any involvement with the police is triggering to me because of my run ins with the police. Um, no, I've never been to jail. <laughs> but I have run-ins with the cops. Um, But nah, you have to ask yourself what good is stuff doing you? Um, And you have to learn from every situation. You know, I'm one of those type of people that I look for the good in in situations, but uh, you got to figure out a way to kind of, if something is negative and it's toxic, you, you have to ask yourself, how much am I going to deal with this? And what good is it doing me? Because ultimately, if it's not doing you any good, uh, you probably shouldn't be wasting your time. And uh, one of the last points that they talked about in this article was being able to accept toxic thoughts and then release them. I think it's very important that we get like, because we all have a, <laughs> we all have a, a positive voice and a negative voice. And it's kind of like, you know, the the cartoon with the, the, the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. Um, it's important that you get that negative voice out of your head because honestly, if the voice is strong enough and it has the power to overcome you, it will change your day. It will change your night. It will ultimately change your relationships and your life. You know, because a lot of us are our worst critics, our, our own worst critics. And I'm be honest. I mean, like, and I've always said that, like I played football growing up and There was no coach that was going to be harder on me than me because I know when I'm doing something right. I know when I'm doing something wrong. And even when I'm doing something right, sometimes I'm so critical. And so um, I don't want to say perfectionist, but I was just I wanted to get things right. So even when I did something right, I was like, oh, okay, you did that, but you could do it better. Even sometimes with this podcast, I'll listen back to it. I'm like. Uh, that could have been a little better. I could have said this. I could have been a little smoother coming out of this. I mean, like, it's just that's just who I am. But, you know, I, that's just me being my worst critic. But I'm not going to let that prevent me from doing what I'm doing or moving forward. And I think we all have to kind of live with that. Um, and there's nothing with being your, your own worst critic. But you can't. Ultimately, what you have to do is you have to be able to shut down the negative voice in your head. And that's what they talked about in the article. Um, for someone like me who has a great deal of self-confidence and self-esteem, I can do that pretty well. You know, I don't necessarily deal in a lot of negative energy, but everybody doesn't. And I, to be honest, it wasn't until I got probably in my mid thirties that I realized that everybody wasn't like that. And I, 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 it took me a minute to kind of figure out like, okay, well maybe this person can deal with this this way but that's the best way that they can deal with it because I don't have those type of issues. Um, And I don't allow stuff to fester, but everybody's not like me. And, you know, that doesn't make me better or worse or anything like that, but it's just, you know, you have to come to realization that people are where they are. And then you would want to help them, particularly those who are closer to you. Um, But yeah, you, you want to get rid of the negative thoughts. Um, You want to get rid of that negative voice, Uh, ultimately you want to take those feelings uh, and those thoughts and 
address them, assess them, and then move on and let them go. Uh, and, you know, obviously, in the article also talked about about how, you know, having and wrestling with negative thoughts, how dangerous it could be. And it could be damaging as well, because ultimately it kind of helps form what you think or what you may feel about yourself or maybe people that you care about. Um, ultimately, you deserve to live your life free of all toxic, toxic things. I mean, because you want to be around positive things. You want to be po- You want to be a positive person. Um, and you want to live outside of your head. And I think ultimately, once you get to that point where you're not living in any type of toxic thoughts or toxic behavior, then you're moving in the direction that most of you want to go. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for checking out this bonus edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I'm your boy, 12 Kyle. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast so you can get bonus coverage just like this one. Uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Five G's.